tonight we're going to do a long meditation and I would like to give a short talk before the longer meditation. The topic tonight is about the internal challenge of the week. And it is worded in a way that's very kind of up in the air and the challenge itself is very much up in the air. So it's, it's largely up to interpretation and for you to decide how you're gonna do it. But I'm gonna give you some examples and, and uh, ideas for how to. So the challenge is to choose to be with something in your life that you cannot change. And the example I've been using this week is I'm five foot 10. I'm actually five foot nine and a half, but don't tell anybody. And uh, I can spend as much time as I want to wishing that I were six and a half feet. It's not gonna happen for me. I don't even think that there's a surgery that I can get that'll add a half a foot to it. I can wear bigger shoes, but I will be incredibly awkward in seven, seven inch heels. Uh, 11, no, I did the math wrong, but you know, it's a really tall heel. It's not gonna work for me. So I can spend a lot of time and energy wishing that I was six and a half feet tall and it will not change anything. And uh, my experience of being five foot 10 can either be like, you know, why do I have to be five foot 10? Why can't I just be a little bit taller? Why can't I have that longer arm for punching people and that longer leg for kicking people? Uh, why can't I just tower over people when I walk into the room? You know, you, you tall guys, you know how it is. You get, there's that energy. But for, for us tiny people, when I walk into a room, nobody pays attention to me. And uh, I can have the experience of like, why, why me? How come this person deserves to be tall and I, and I deserve to be short? What did I do in a past life? to deserve this. Uh, I can have this woe is me kind of attitude, this feeling of, you know, this negative feeling towards it. Or, and this is the part that, that when I heard this and got it for the first time was very mind blowing for me, was like, I can choose to be five foot 10 and to really be totally happy with that. And, when faced with the choice of two different experiences, one of which is uh, positive and enjoyable, the other of which is negative and, and disempowering, uh, when I have these two choices of an experience of something that will not change, why not choose the more positive, empowering experience? Uh, there are many things in life that we can change. And of course, there are many things that we should be changing. There, there is so much about ourselves and about society and about uh, you know, our martial arts practice and about our meditation that deserves real attention and focused effort in order to improve. And then there are so many things that will not change no matter how hard we try or wish and that just saps our strength and leaves us disempowered in the face of all these things that we could actually be working on with great effect. And my proposition to you is that you can choose, choose being exactly how tall you are, choose the job that you have if you're not gonna change it, you may as well choose it. And you might need to choose it every day. Choose the relationship that you're in, right? This is one of the best examples because with your relationships, you will, you will get annoyed or, or worse sometimes on a daily or multiple times throughout the day basis. And you might have to keep choosing this person every day. Uh, you might have to keep choosing your job every day. But as soon as you make the choice, like this is what it is, this is who it is, then you're taken out of this place where you normally, or at least in my experience, you normally get to, which is like, how long is it gonna be like this? Why am I stuck like this? Should I try to get a new job? Should I try to get a new relationship? Should I try to do, and you're stuck in this like limbo where you're feeling very 
off balance and very much uh, disempowered rather than I'm choosing this. I'm choosing this person. I'm choosing this job and I'm going to make the most out of it. I'm going to pour myself into it. So, uh, you know, I'm dr me coming to this job is very different from most of you going to your jobs because as I point out all the time, I love what I do. Of course, there are days when I would rather stay in bed or watch TV or whatever, but for the most part, I love it. And, and of course, there are days that I have to remind myself of that. That part is no different, right? For some of us, we need to remind ourselves every day. For, for some of us, we just need to remind ourselves like once a year or so. But uh, as soon as I choose, there, there is no going back for me. I'm gonna teach martial arts every day for the rest of my life. And that is the way that I would love it to be. Uh, but imagine that it weren't that way for me. And every time I show up, I'm like this again, these people in class, <laughs> this ridiculous drill that nobody gets. <laughs> and, and this experience is very disempowering and not enjoyable. Uh, but if I choose, this is it. I know that I'm gonna be doing this. Uh, it takes away the whole sense of back and forth, this whole sense of feeling like you're kind of floating around without an anchor and you know that this is what you're doing. You know that this is where you're gonna be. You know that this is uh, a solid base for you to then build on and act from. And if you cannot get there with your job or your relationship or whatever else it is, make a change, right? Uh, and that possibly means leaving it and doing something else. But if you can get there and choose this, choose this thing, whatever it is, your experience is so much different and you are uh, so much more powerful in that, in that activity and then with everything else that you do. You'll notice that when one thing in life is off, everything else feels off too. And uh, if, if everything feels like it's in its place and solid, then you are uh, in everything that you do and in everything additionally that you're kind of adding to life, you have that powerful base, you have that solid footing. So I use the analogy in the, uh, in the article that I wrote for the newsletter this week of choosing which flavor of ice cream you're gonna get. Uh, very often you might have the experience of you choose one flavor, but then as soon as you pay for it, you're like, Oh, but what if I got that one? It might be a little bit better. And instead of enjoying the ice cream that you're eating now, you are spending your time and energy wishing that you had a different scoop of ice cream. One of these will lead to a very enjoyable uh, experience of being very much in the present. The other will lead you to feeling very disempowered and not enjoying the present moment. So choose, right? And then when you choose, don't second guess. This is something that is very important for us in our martial arts practice. And if somebody's throwing a punch at you and you choose to step this way, you're out of the way, that's great. If you choose to step the other way, you're out of the way, that's great. If you're not sure what to do and you're like, ah, uh, and then you get punched, that's not great. And some of you have never been punched, but you can probably imagine how not great it is to be punched. So make a choice and, and uh, without second guessing, go, go forth from there. You went to the inside of the punch, okay, I'm doing this. You went to the outside of the punch, okay, I'm doing this. But second guessing and getting stuck, waffling back and forth is no good. Uh, we want to get really great at choosing like this in an instant and without second guessing in life. And we want this choice to be very empowering. Now, if it's something that will not change no matter what, this is a great way to practice not second guessing, right? If you wake up and you look in the mirror and you're like, yep, still five foot 10, there's no second guessing that needs to happen here. It is, this is me, I'm choosing this and I love it. And then I'm gonna go through the rest of my day without wondering, should I try to be six and a half feet? You just choose it. And uh, you'll see how practicing kind of this, this choosing in anything in life will help us to choose the other things in life too. 
So we want the experience or the feeling of choosing these things to be like, I am all powerful. It is like I'm standing in front of these, these 31 flavors of ice cream at Baskin Robbins and I choose this one and in my perfect reality in the universe that I control completely, that's the best ice cream for me to have and I chose it. And I stick to that and I'm enjoying the ice cream fully. You should be able to have the same experience if there are no choices whatsoever and this is something that you're just stuck with. Still choose it like, yeah, guess what? I had all these options. I could have chosen to be six and a half feet. I could have chosen to be two feet tall. I chose five foot 10 and I feel great about it. Uh, choosing the things that don't change in life and then feeling great about it is a very different experience from what most of us have. So in meditation, this is a little bit, a little bit different, but it's a similar idea. This meditation might be terrible. This meditation might be great. You choose this meditation exactly the way that it is. This breath might feel shallow. This breath might feel too long. This breath might be, I completely forgot I was supposed to be paying attention to the breath, but you choose this. This moment and this experience in meditation is perfect. It is exactly the right meditation and the right breath and the right way of being. It's the only way that it was ever going to be. Uh, so when we're sitting, we can either have the experience of uh, constantly getting pulled back and forth between thoughts and wishing that our meditation was better or the mind wandering, whatever else. Or we can just be solid here in this choice to be focused on this breath and sitting in this meditation exactly as perfect or imperfect it is, as it is, it is the perfect meditation for us today. So choose it. When you sit, uh, you might be sitting seiza, you might be sitting cross-legged, you might be sitting in a chair at home. However you sit, choose to sit. And that is where you are. You're not moving. You're not like, oh, I should have put this foot on top instead of the other foot. There is no other way that it is. This is the posture. This is uh, the breath. This is us in this moment. It doesn't need to change. You should not want to change it. You should be totally happy and present here with the way that it is. So meditation on some level is the act of just choosing and being with it and being great with it exactly the way that it is. So that's what we're going to do now for the next 20 minutes because I talked a little bit longer than I should have, but okay, sit comfortably. <laughs> 